This is VOA News. I'm Tommy McKee. Syrian government troops supported by Russian warplanes advanced on a rebel-held town in the northwestern province of Idlib, according to local sources. The ongoing offensive against the town in southern Idlib has caused a major influx of civilians to move to safer areas along the Syrian-Turkish border, a war monitoring group said on Wednesday. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, which has researchers across the war-torn country, said that following intense fighting in the area, Syrian government forces took control of dozens of villages around the strategic town, killing dozens of people and forcing thousands of local residents to flee their homes. A military escalation has caused dozens of civilian casualties and displaced 80,000 Syrians. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has been promising U.S. President Donald Trump a special gift for Christmas, AP's Jackie Quinn. After North Korea's leader warned he would take action if sanctions are not eased by the end of the year. The speculation is that the Christmas gift he's promised the U.S. would likely be a new missile test, perhaps a missile capable of delivering a nuclear warhead. When asked how the U.S. will respond, President Trump said maybe Kim Jong-un is planning a nice present, like a beautiful vase rather than a missile launch. A U.N. spokesman says the world body has a Christmas message for Pyongyang. It should work for peace and stability on the Korean Peninsula and resume disarmament talks with the United States. Jackie Quinn, Washington. Protesters in Iraq are firmly rejecting the latest nominee for prime minister, saying all rank-and-file politicians are unacceptable. A pro-Iranian bloc in parliament has chosen Basra governor Assad el Idani and handed his name over to be the president or to the president. This is VOA News. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu had to be rushed off the stage at an election rally in the southern Israeli port city after a rocket was fired from the Gaza Strip late Wednesday. One rocket fired from Gaza was intercepted by the Iron Dome missile defense system. Netanyahu has rocket sounded. He later returned to finish his speech. The leaders of China and Japan held a bilateral meeting Wednesday. Reuters' Emer McCarthy. Chinese Premier Li Keqiang and Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe have vowed to strengthen their relationship at a bilateral meeting in Chengdu on Wednesday. Li said in the meeting that he hoped the relationship between the two countries could get back on track and progress in the future. Abe hopeful ongoing discussions will lead to a visit by Xi. Wednesday's meeting came on the sidelines of a trilateral summit with South Korea, which provided a chance for the leaders of Japan and South Korea to meet for the first time in more than a year and stressed the need to improve ties after the, quote, worst period of tensions between their countries in decades. That's Reuters' Emer McCarthy reporting. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan paid a surprise visit to Tunisia on Wednesday to discuss cooperation for a possible ceasefire in neighboring Libya. Turkey supports the internationally recognized government. Erdogan also reaffirmed Ankara's willingness to send troops to Libya if it received such a request. Scores of Chileans were left homeless on Christmas after fire swept through a poor neighborhood in the city, destroying more than 150 homes. Helicopters dump water on the area, trying to extinguish the last of the fires that began on Christmas Eve. Authorities said arson might be to blame. Hong Kong police fired tear gas and used pepper spray on protesters Wednesday to disperse crowds at Christmas-decorated shopping malls and nearby streets. Hundreds of protesters descended on shopping malls around the Chinese-ruled city, shouting popular slogans. Police have described their responses to the unrest as reactive as well as restrained. Again, officials in Burkina Faso say soldiers killed 80 Islamic State militants who launched simultaneous attacks on a military post in the northern town of Urbinda Tuesday. The militants killed at least 35 civilians, mostly women, before they were beaten back. Seven soldiers were also killed. Islamic militants in Mali, under pressure from French forces, spilled across the border to Burkina Faso. Find more at VOA. 